Most buyers are aware that we are experiencing a seller's market. However, being aware of a seller's market and knowing how to respond if you really want to buy a home in this market are two completely different things. I'm Chuck Shaver with the Shaver Group with Keller Williams Heritage Realty, and if you're serious about buying a home in a seller's market, then you must consider these 10 things. Number one, work with a bulldog realtor. Your best friend that's been a friend for many, many years may get the job done. However, you have too much at stake, too much money at stake to mess around at a time like this. You need someone that is not afraid to get their hands dirty. Experience does matter. What is experience? Is it your grandmother? She's been around for 70 or 80 years after all. No, not at all. It, age doesn't even necessarily matter. What does matter is someone who's done a, a good bit of transactions in this market and has recent sales. Listen to your realtor. Do your homework. Do your homework yourself. Look around online. Be familiar with what homes are going for in your area. Now, your realtor will know the market in this area, and he or she should be familiar with what's going on. They will be attuned to, and they'll be working, they'll be digging around to find out what the seller of the home that you want is after. Number two, get pre-approved with the right lender. A quick Google search will easily take you to 100 different lenders. Many of them are very good and most of them spend a ton of money on marketing. However, there's a much smaller list that we work with. We work with them because they have a track record of getting our customers to closing. They answer their phones, not only for us, but they'll answer them for you as well to answer any questions they may have. Often these phones are ringing their way um, on Saturday or Sunday or whatever and that's very important. Large banks simply won't answer their phones during those times. Another reason we use these lenders is they're proactive with problems. If problems arise, which they always do, it's usually good to know them before they arise. It's important to note also that we are not compensated by any of these lenders. You might think that we have a bias. Well, we do have a bias because they get you to closing. It has nothing to do with compensation from them. Number three, let's talk about escrow. Escrow is the money that you'll put down to show the seller how serious you are about the purchase of this home. Putting down a little bit, say 500 bucks, doesn't really give the message that you are all in. Putting down a larger amount, $1,000 or $5,000, gives a much greater uh, perception that you're serious about the purchase. Keep in mind, if you go through inspections and it just doesn't seem like it's working, this money may be refundable to you. Number four, let's talk about the inspection period. The inspection period is a period during which you will have a home inspection done that looks over the entire home, all the major components to make sure it's acceptable to you. This inspection period typically is 15 days, at least by the contract that we're currently using. Sellers, however, don't like long inspection periods. And we recommend that you shorten that inspection period because in reality, it can be done in much less time. I've seen them even done in two or three days However, this should be verified with your home inspector to make sure that they can get to it in this busy market. Don't push the sellers for non-essential repairs during this inspection period. Often they'll have backup offers and if you make a bunch of requests, a bunch of repairs, they'll simply tell you no and send you packing and then your whole search starts over again and now you're out inspection monies. Number five, paying above the appraised value. In competitive markets, buyers are often willing to pay above the appraised value. However, the lender will only finance the appraised value. In order for this to happen, in order for you to be able to do this, you must have additional cash in addition to your down payment and your closing costs. Number six, let's talk about down payments. A strong down payment gives the indication to sellers that you are a strong buyer. Sellers don't really want to take their homes off the market for extended period of times for you to do inspections and whatnot for a buyer that is not really well qualified. Number seven, concessions. Popular concessions include asking the seller to help pay for your closing costs or to require the contingency that the sale of your home happen in order to purchase their home. While these may be necessary and they may be a requirement for you, it's important to know that they do weaken your offer, so use them only when needed. Keep in mind, it's important not to violate any fair housing laws which include discrimination based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, or disability. Number nine, cash is king. We all know that sellers would prefer a cash buyer over a finance buyer, but no matter how you're paying for it, at the closing table, it's all cash. In light of this, avoid making lower offers or low ball offers thinking that they're going to choose your offer over somebody else's. Number 10, price, the offering price. Yes, this is the last, but it's also the most obvious. In a competitive market in times like this, the asking price is simply the starting point. It often goes up from there. 
your realtor should be considering the use of an escalatory addendum. An escalatory addendum simply helps you compete with other offers to give you a leg up. Ask him or her to tell you about it. They should be well versed in this and it's a tool that you should seriously consider. In summary, all this goes out the window in a buyer's market. Markets change and your behavior should too. As I noted before, the most important key is your realtor. He or she will be guiding the whole process. They'll be getting you into these homes quickly. Listen to your realtor, ask a lot of questions. Remember, they only get paid by the seller when you close, so they're motivated to get you closed. If you have questions or would like help, either comment below or reach out to us directly.